We're glad to know you're still there and watching the run-up. And uh, we're here with our guest today. And our guest is a teacher, a journalist, an author, a broadcaster, a dramatist, and even a sportsman. There's so many things rolled into this one body. But today he is here as a politician gunning for the highest position in Cross River State. Please join us to welcome Mr. Efiong Nyong. Welcome to the program. Sir. Yeah, great pleasure to be here. Okay, uh, it's interesting because in the introduction I, I talked about you being a journalist and a broadcaster and all that. So you have been in the media space in Lagos and in Calabar, Cross River State generally. And you are literally the person who makes the hot seats for people to sit in. But today you are sitting here today uh, to talk <laughs> about all sorts of issues. How does it even feel? Well, I think it feels great. Um, you see the life walking from the newsroom to talking politics and want to, being a politician can be very interesting because in the years, in my years as a journalist, I've had to cover plenty, plenty, plenty governments uh, over three decades of such coverage as a reporter, as an editor, as a producer, as everything. I've had to see a lot of government people from the perspective of a journalist. Mm. So it's also good to look at it from the inside. Uh, what does it feel to run a state? Or uh, what does it feel taking decisions that um, being the one to be on the seat to be criticized, mm -hmm. sometimes it, it can be very interesting to see how it balances out. Oh, okay, but then you were the reporter. Now you are the politician. And sometimes we say that when you're at table with uh, the kings, uh, because of table manners, you don't talk anymore. Have you been bitten by this bug that it seems once you enter politics, a lot of things that you were before, you drop them for you to become a, a good politician? Well, if it were for those kind of table manners, I will not be aspiring at all. Um, because um, having risen from uh, the reporter on the street to sitting on several editorial chairs, um, I cannot say that I have not seen or have not come across the temptation of wanting to join them and um, not joining them and standing aside to see how can we correct the system it takes more than courage, it takes the grace of God to be able to face these issues and say let's change this because it is not working. Mm -hmm. And of course you can see what's happening around the Nigerian country today what's happening particularly in Cross River State today, is to ask yourself, is it working for you? If it's working for you, how about other people? How does it feel to be the, the big man in, the, in a community where every other person is poor? How does it feel to imagine that you are the big man when you cannot sleep with your eyes closed? How does it feel to be the big man when all around you is poverty and pain? I mean, it doesn't, feel, it doesn't sit well with me. Okay, you happen to come from Bakasi, that was in the news, still is in the news and all that. And I don't know how it feels to come from Bakasi after the seeding of the oil wells. Uh, what place does Bakasi really have now in the scheme of things in Cross River State? Well, I think for Bakasi, it's, uh, it's pitiful, painful, and um, I don't know what other adjective I would use to describe Bakasi before and after the seeding. Uh, it's like the pains of the people really started after the seeding. Because before the seeding, the people were free to fish. They were free to live, to live because we are, we are, people are basically fishermen uh, to exploit the richest, one of the richest continental shelves in the world. But right now, you don't have access to that uh, continental shelf because you go out there, the gendarmes are there, and um, there's so much insecurity. Banditry has taken over. Um, Cultism has taken over, kidnapping has taken over, and all that. More painful about the Bakasi theory is the fact that up till two months ago, the government of Cross River State has been lying to people, lying to people that there is no money, that the federal government has not paid any money, that the, all, of the, all of the talk about the Green Tree Agreement was, uh, was a hoax, wasn't true at all. But the chairman of the Revenue Mobilization uh, Committee of the Federation came out to say that uh, they've been paying Cross River State government since 2008 the sum of um, 500 million dollars every month. And the moment he said that, the next day, the Chief Press Secretary to the 
governor, um, Mr. Christian Ita, came out to, with a release that it is not uh, 500 million dollars, it is 500 million naira, which goes to confirm that, yes, in truth, such money has been going to cross the state 12, and it's called Bakasi Stabilization Fund. Now, if you take 500 million naira every month times 12, that gives you uh, 6 billion naira. Multiply that by 14 years, that is since 2008 till date, it gives you 84 billion naira. And when you get to Bakasi, there's no water to drink. When you go to Bakasi, there's no school. When you go to Bakasi, there's no health center. When you go to Bakasi, the, the boys are in gangs, the boys, they cannot fish, they cannot farm, they are, they, 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 the boys have become something else, gangsters, and the women now become free women, uh, 5,000 naira is a whole lot of money for a people who get allocation of 500 million naira a month for stabilization fund, and that does not include the local government allocation that goes to Bakasi. So what goes on in Bakasi today is a huge rape of the people, of their intellect, of their, of their heritage, of everything that is positive about humanity. I think it's inhuman that such things go on in this age and time. This is the 21st century, for God's sake. And you see, and I come from there. Even if, I, even if I'm not from, I wasn't from Bakasi, it also does not sit well. And, this, and these are the, the people that, are perpetrated, that have perpetrated all of this are the so-called leaders, are the so-called governments. I mean, the former governor of Cross River State or the former governor of Cross River State cannot say he does not know. The traditional rulers' council cannot say they don't know. I mean, it, it's hurting. Yeah. Any time you think about it, it's nightmarish, to okay. say the least. Um, my, my, my colleague is also standing by to ask uh, a lot of questions, but let's just finish with um, some kind of introduction uh, that we are doing before Bayo sets in uh, to ask his own questions. Um, Let's start with your ambition now. Uh, when we sent out our flyer saying that you're going to be on this program, some people tweeted at us and told us some things that we needed to find out. For instance, there is one Chief Stanley Amber that tweeted at us saying that you are not even a, a candidate, you are a placeholder. And he went further to explain that where you are or you were, I don't know what it is, the state chairman of ADC, and you called out for anyone who wanted to be the governor uh, of Cross River State under ADC, and nobody came, and then you took it up, hoping that someone will come up. So you are not even ready to prosecute this race and become the governor of Cross River State. So he still calls you a placeholder. Let us know what you are uh, in your heart, in sincerity, and who now is the chairman of ADC in Cross River State if you have an alternative? The chairman of ADC in Cross River State today is Felix Atu. For Mr. Amber and people like him, if he wants to know anything about ADC, he should check out with the national headquarters of ADC or should get in touch with ADC Cross River State and get informed. You should get in touch with INEC and get informed. Okay, but are you not intimidated a little bit about the fact that ADC may not have as much structures, and by structures I mean the people, to uh, <laughs> win <laughs> this race? You see, when I hear structures, I laugh. I laugh because uh, what, do, what does it mean? You want to reach out to the people and tell the people that, yes, this thing can be done. You can bring about change, you can bring about transformation, you can bring about better living. And you sell yourself to the electorate. Let the electorate decide. If they find you worthy, why not? When you say you have structures, what do they do with structures? Structures for rigging, structures for intimidation, structures for getting money and diverting it, structures for sharing our commonwealth at all levels of government in Nigeria. That's what the structures are. You go, oh, this is a big man. This is the opinion leader in so-so-so area. And you get to that area, you meet Chief A, Chief B, Chief C. And they take all the decisions at the detriment of the people. I mean... When I hear the word structure, you don't have this structure, you don't have that structure. What structure do I need to tell Crossivarians that we can, our lives can be better? What structures do I need to tell Crossivarians, vote for me? What structures do I need to tell Nigerians that, have we not suffered enough? What structures do I need to tell people, have we not, are we not feeling so insecure enough that we decide to say, let us stop and change our lives and contribute to making life better for all of us. What structures do I need? Okay, but word on the street, maybe because uh, it depends on where you stand, but word on the street from 
uh, one section of the Cross River people is that Ayade has done so well. He brought in the young ones. He has set the paces in, in, in industrialization of Cross River State. He has over 34 industries in Cross River right now that are just awaiting uh, certification to start working and so many other things. So he has placed a bar so high that somebody else may not be able to surpass. Well, are these are these true or is this the true situation in Cross River State right now? <laughs> I came in from Calabar just yesterday. Um, I have in all my campaigns, in all my consultations and movements, I've um, tried not to stand on the path of um, directly accusing or directly condemning anyone for what he or she has not done right. But let me say here and now that all of these industries, I would like those that feel that way to tell us which one is working. Building lock-up shops or big warehouses and putting signboards in front of them does not make any industry. When industries are functional, there will not be joblessness. When industries are functional, you will not find essays of everything that you think of. I mean, all we need, or the next thing we need, probably will have essay uh, carrying of cop in the government house, essay carrying of refuse, essay, I mean, so many essays. What would the essays be doing if these industries were working? The truth is that these industries are not working. If you doubt, go to Cross River State and verify. That is one. Two, the destruction of Cross River State, if you get there, the civil service is in shambles. You have structures, you have floors of office at the secretariat that are empty. The curtains are in shreds. There are no seats, there are no people in the office. Since 2014, people have not been employed in Cross River State. If there is any employment, it's through the back door. The only employment that goes on in Cross River State is the appointment of essays essay for everything in this world and the reason is simply that because the government does not want to pay gratuity and when you are not going to you does not want to pay salaries and there's so much money left and you can afford to pay essays since 2014 in cross river state gratuities have not been paid to people that have retired and so many have retired in eight years pensions are not paid on time you'll have at least three months of pension then one month will be paid you can go to cross river state and verify uh, Mr. Lowake, I'm sure you're itching to say something now. I, I leave the floor to you right now. Thanks, Yambu. And uh, it's, it's a great pleasure to see my friend, <laughs> Big F. Young, uh, running for the uh, governorship of Cross River State. Um, one of the most important states in Nigeria. Uh, the state with the largest, with what is left the largest of what is left of the tropical rainforest in Nigeria. Uh, the state with an internationally recognized endangered animal species, the white-throated monkey, which is found only in Cross River State in the whole world. The state with Obudokato Ranch, which has been touted as having the potential to be a major tourism game changer uh, in Nigeria. And a state that boasts of having perhaps the largest pineapple plantation. Um, Fion, these are things that have been said about um, Cross River State. Uh, but from what you have been saying, apparently it's a completely different picture despite these potentials. What plans do you have particularly to transform the tourism sector, which without any doubt, many within Nigeria and outside Nigeria have said Cross River State has a potential of turning into a money spinner. Well, uh, Bayo, nice to see you after so many years. Um, but let me quickly jump on to answer these questions. Now, the Obudukato Ranch, for instance, is dysfunctional at the moment. The cable car that used to be there not working. For you to get to the ranch, you need to drive up the ranch um, before Donald Duke. All of, almost, if I would say 80% of the innovation that was brought in by Donald Duke to the ranch is not working. You can go to Cross River State and verify. The potential is still very strong in Cross River State. 
And one of the reasons I'm running is to say that in Cross River State, we have the highest number of masquerades in this world. The Southern Cross River State, where I come from, has more than 120 masquerades, each one with a different beat, with different dance steps. In Cross River State, you have the old residency, the office of the former the administrator of the Southern Protectorate of Nigeria. That resident is still there. That it houses the National Museum in Calabar. The prison, the prison cell where Over and where Benin was kept after I was was kept after the invasion of the Benin Kingdom is still there for people to see. If you go to that place now, you cannot even enter the museum because there's a barrier that cuts that does not allow people to enter. Do you stand from a distance? You cannot enter. During the days of Donald Duke as governor of Cross River State, any visitor that comes to Cross River State is taken to go and see the museum. Today, you will not, you will not even have the courage to go in that direction because you have gone 13 policemen all keeping barriers all over the place. That's, an, that's one. Two, if you see the dances of Cross River State are many. The music is many. The food species of Cross River State is second to none. Not even the Chinese can compete. Because in Cross River State, we can produce this our Igusi soup in more than six varieties. Same for Ogbono, same for Okra, same for Afang. Cassava is produced and presented on the table in more than six different ways and varieties. And all of these things are all still there, still talking about potentials. The new yam festivals in the yam festivals in Cross River State range from the moment you get to Akangpa, to Ugeb, to Bubra, to Ikom, to Goja, to Banliku. All of it you have uh, 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 different festivals that are there for people to take. Now, the pictures and photography in Cross River State was long, long, long developed. In 1926, Fernandez had a studio on Egerton Street. And today, when you talk photography, you probably would not even mention or remember Cross River State. In 2019, I organized the Colors of Cross River State exhibition. And during the course of that research for that work, we found out that there's some artifact that is 1,500 years old older than the Nok culture, which is said to be about the oldest in Nigeria. Now, the Portuguese came to Calabar in the 14th century. This is the 21st century. Long, 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 there was development and civilization long before the Europeans came to that part of the world. In sports, the very first Niger UK tourist team of 1949 had four members from Cross River State. The very first Nigerian to be a world champion was Hogan Kidbasi in 1957. So if you take Cross River State, Apart from the, the, the World Conservation uh, Foundation that keeps the, the forest virgin in Cross River State, which is also another potential that the World Wildlife Foundation pays money to Cross River State government to, to, to preserve. And none of these things has, are, are being uh, exploited and shown to the world. And so when you go there and see, all you see is potential, potential, potential. And I say that if I take over the reins of government in Cross State, Bakasi will be a Dubai in Africa, will be a Dubai in Nigeria. It will be a place when you sit and look at the natural vegetation, you look at the terrain, you look at the topography, you look at the, 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 what nature has given to Cross River State. Even the best film village should be in Cross River State. In 2002, we shot Mutanda. I played King Mutanda in that movie. And... The journey to producing that movie was quite an experience. And I thought that by now we'd have a Hollywood somewhere in, in Cross River State. But no, our film producers still run to go to Asaba, we go to Enugu, we go to all places that do not have the topography or the landscape that is comparable to anywhere in Cross River State. That tells you that the people that are running the affairs of Cross River State either deliberately are keeping it down or they do not know. And because everything is man, no man, everything is about a structure or no structure, these things remain a potential. But we can get away from all that. Cross River State used to be one of the most secured places in Nigeria. I could recall that during the heat of the Niger Delta crisis, a lot of oil workers were living in Calabar and going to work in Port Harcourt and going to, the, to, the, uh, to where they do the oil wells. A lot of people were li working in Akwaibom City and living in Calabar. But today, the reverse is the case. And you ask, what has gone wrong? How did we get it wrong that the cable car is not working, that the UN festival, the Liverpool festival, that was primed as one of the best in Africa, that has so much of sponsorship, no longer gets any sponsorship? The Calabar Carnival is what we are now trying to do. They are now trying to do another one. On Sunday, I was in Calabar to witness the last, the, the, the third and um, final dry run for the Calabar festival. 
the masquerades of Calabar, like I said, of Cross River State, like I said, is second to none around this world. Why don't we have a festival of masquerades that will attract Europeans and historians and people from around the world to come and learn and understand how has this person, how have these people evolved between that time and today? So there's so much of potential, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. And so you need to just go okay. there and verify. Okay, Ephraim, um, there's also the uh, big question following the delisting of Cross River State as an oil producing state. Many issues have, have been uh, tied around that. Um, you mentioned the, the, the issue of the uh, 500 million naira monthly, although that is for Bakasi uh, stabilization fund. But, but there's this problem of the oil. Uh, what, what, what is described as uh, Cross River suffering the direct impact of oil exploration. Yeah, see, um, like we all know, as, as students of geography, uh, the winds blow from the west to the east, and Bakas is in the east. So, impact of oil exploration. And secondly, do you have any plans? to get exploration, because people believe that Cross River has oil. People believe that Cross River has oil. It's just that exploration isn't happening there. So two questions. What will you do to make sure that the population which is affected by oil exploration is compensated? And then what efforts will you make to attract oil exploration in Cross River? Again, you see, you need to know, see our politicians from Cross River State, uh, those in the National Assembly, what kind of politics they play, their level of their level of depth of cap and capacity, how they are able to exploit this to the benefit of the people. Now, let me quickly digress a bit. During the campaigns of the presidential campaigns, um, the former minister for the Niger Delta, Godfrey Lakwabio, said he paid uh, the former governor of Cross River State 18.3 billion naira. He settled him for the oil wells that were taken to uh, uh, Kwaibom. Whether that was political talk or not, it's something that one needs to, to, to revisit. But I must say that, uh, did he settle the former governor or did he settle Cross River State? Where does it sit in the accounts? Why would he pay or uh, settle anyone if Cross River State was not entitled to money statutorily? But let me also say that there is need. The politics, where I talked about the uh, people not playing the correct politics, uh, is that you, you, there's need to revisit that and that case as a whole for there to be a fresh geographical uh, map to be checked by independent sources because there's so much of politics that went on during that time we hear that some monies were paid or some monies exchanged hands some of these things i cannot verify that's why i didn't start by talking about them but there is need with what happened during the political the primary the political campaigns during the primaries for all of these things to be revisited for us to see whether or not the cross river state should be compensated that's on one hand on the other hand talking about the winds blow from the west to east and Bakasi and Cross River State is on the eastern side of the, of the winds. So when winds blow, the oil spills towards Bakasi, towards Cross River State, damaging the vegetation, damaging the marine culture, damaging everything that's on that side. And they say, oh, you are not supposed to get the benefit of, uh, oil, of the, of the oil uh, exploration because uh, they are not drilling oil from your, from your land, as, the, as the, the, the politics have determined. So that's quite um, interesting, I would say, um, because and that's why I say the politicians are not playing the correct kind of politics to be able to draw the attention of relevant authorities to see reason why we are most affected by the devastation that is caused by oil spillage and the effects of oil exploration in the Niger Delta. That's on one hand. Yes, I can tell you that there are speculations, strong speculation, that oil still exists in that area in the area of in, in cross river state and it's not being exploited exploration is not taking place there that also makes it very interesting especially when you look at the fact that for how many years for all of the years that i have lived we have we have kept looking for and sinking money in the lake chad to look for oil in neglecting areas where oil is easily available that's also part of the politics. Let me also say part of this politics is the, the, the marine, the marine, uh, the, the maritime sector of Cross River State. They tell you that ships cannot enter the Calabar, uh, the Calabar Channel because it is shallow. 
But these are the same channel. This is the same channel from where over 60 percent of slaves were carried out of Nigeria. This is the same channel from which Elder Dempster was shipping people. This is the same channel from where people were going to Liverpool even before and during the colonial times and afterwards. And each time they want to move in goods in the night and move the goods through the, the that hub through the Calabar uh, port, the, the the channel gets opened and ships birth. But when it's supposed to be for regular maritime activities, commercial activity, then the, 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 they'll tell you that it's not working. But let me also, this also goes, takes me back to the issue of uh, the, 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 the sector of um, tourism. Now, with all of the sand, that the, the kind of dredging that goes on in the Calabar River, people dredge the channel and pour the same sand back into the ocean. So when wind blows, the channel gets blocked again. And you ask, why would this channel not be dredged and use the sand used to create a beach that will enhance tourism in Cross River State. One of the things I will do very differently, creating beaches along the Calabar River using the sand that comes from the channel, so the channel will always be deep enough to accommodate ships, but in the meantime, it will also balance out by creating beaches for people to have proper tourism. I mean, when people want to have the beach experience in Cross River State, they go to Aquaibom, they go to the Ibn Beach, whereas there's every potential to create a, a beach, uh, create not just a beach, beaches in Cross River State. If we can reclaim Babbage and people now live in the, inside the Atlantic in Lagos, why would people not take advantage of a natural presentation that exists in the Cross River? Okay. Uh, um, by, uh, just a moment. Sorry, sorry Yango. Okay. Okay, go on. Uh, okay. I was I was concerned because we are talking about exploring and exploiting uh, some of the potential that we have in Cross River State, and one of them, the very strong factor uh, or potential that we have in Cross River State, is in the area of agriculture. For instance, you talk about rice planting; uh, it's produced so much so that um, another state, a neighboring state, uh, Ebonyi, is said to be enjoying uh, the the benefits of a rice producing state. Now. So uh, cassava in Obubra and so many other places, mm -hmm. like you have mentioned already. So what are the plans to make sure agriculture in Cross River State becomes a money earner in such a way that Cross River may not need to depend on maybe the federal government uh, cap in hand every month for allocation? It goes back to the persons that run our government. Now, at the peak of Nigeria's celebration as the oil palm headquarters of this world, uh, cross River State, Akwabuyo, where I come, where my mother comes from. My mother comes from Ekpuribio Bakpa in Akwabuyo. And when you go there till today, all of the governments of Cross River State, from the military to this time, to this day, have not thought it wise or fit to replant the oil palm. You see, find the very old, very tall trees of oil palm are what you still find there. So it is possible that when we come into government, we will replant all of the trees. We will ensure that we get the, the kind of yields that in two, three years, you begin to have very fruitful yields to return Cross River State and Nigeria back to the map as oil palm producers of the world, where you can all, not only will, 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 will produce the, the, the oil palm, palm canal oil also comes from oil palm. And a whole lot of the jute that comes from the canal is also very resourceful in terms as a raw material. So there's, that's on one hand. The, each, the ones that have been developed by the, 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 the pineapple, uh, let me give uh, the pineapple and some of the rice, that uh, cocoa that's been developed by a whole lot of uh, local farmers are things that um, we will support agriculture, will support farmers, will ensure that we do not go there wanting to acquire everything and take it to gov so that it becomes a government property. Because in this part of the world, the only thing when people, when we, the only way we think we can develop is to go take people's land and say, oh, government is doing this, government is doing that. They take away the owners of the property, the owners of the land, and, and, and implant people who are alien to the land, who are alien to the culture. And that's one of the reasons why things don't go right. Mm. So we'll work with the local producers. We'll work, give them, uh, make sure that people get uh, facilities for credit uh, to low, very low rate uh, uh, interest uh, credits that they can use to develop their farmlands and give support. Now, we, we recall that in the days where we had the palm produce boards, a you know, lot were achieved. Why did we scrap the palm produce board? Why can't we bring back, if we have made mistakes, what is the reason why we cannot walk backwards? 
and say, yes, we made a mistake here. There used to be the oil palm produced board. There used to be the cocoa board. There used to be the rubber board. Uh, palm oil used to be one of the, the leading producer of rubber. Dunlop was here. They used to buy from palm oil. How did we get it wrong? So if we have made mistakes, we go back. Definitely, it's very clear that we made mistakes. But we are people, that we have some, let me not say we are people, we have people that have found their way to the seat of government and power. And what they do is, the moment they've made any mistake, it becomes a taboo for them to walk backwards and say, we made a mistake here, let's revisit it. Okay, but we, we, you, you also talked about, and Bayo mentioned it, that uh, we have the forest, and you said that even the government gets some revenue because of the forest that we have. But the forest is being threatened by deforestation. Do you have specific plans? What are there to stop that? See, the, the, the deforestation that goes on in Cross River State is also uh, links to the people in power, government people. The, log, the government says there's no logging, you must not tamper with the forest. And the people and people are still doing it. All the law enforcement people, the law enforcement people, the security agents, agencies, the local. Uh, we have a green sheriff in Cross River State. You ask them what they do. They say they protect the environment. But before everybody's uh, eyes, people are still going into the forest. People are still logging. People are still. They used to carry them in the night. These days they carry them in containers. And the only way that can happen is that there's a connivance. They complete. There's some persons are complicit. And the government is quite complicit in all of this that's going on. I mean, if you, you want to check deforestation, what does it take? You have commissioners, you have essays, you have the security agents. Who are the people that are empowered to go there and load containers? Mm -hmm. Definitely not ordinary people like me. Okay. They're the people in government. They know what's going on. By, by, let me come to you again uh, for some of your questions. <laughs> Yeah, interesting paradox, you know, and this is something which we find across the country. But I want to go to education, um, Effion. There is, uh, in the past, I remember very well, because I also have some family in Cameroon, uh, many, many, many years ago, Anglophone Cameroon uh, came to Cross River for education, for university education because Nigeria is English-speaking, and the English-speaking part of Cameroon, they maintain their English as, as their lingua franca, they are proud of it. And many, many of them used to come to, to you know, Cross River State. So that gave an indication that the university system in Cross River can actually be developed, taking advantage of the proximity of Cross River to Central Africa, to attract those who would wish to, you know, communicate in English. Uh, I haven't seen subsequent governments in Cross River building on that. Have you thought of this? And is there something you would like to do about it? It's considering that these students will pay in foreign exchange. It, goes, it takes us back, uh, Bio. I think this takes us back to the issue about the people in government, what capacities do they have? Now, uh, talking about education, let me start by, for you to have a proper picture, I wish your crew has some pictures that will showcase the State Library in Cross River State. If you leave the UJ Swenner Stadium, the next building to it that is uh, put on the Brickfield uh, Prison, uh, one of the oldest in Cross River, one in the world, the walls still remain as a historical um, monument is the state, Cross River State Library. You will see that library, you probably would think you are somewhere in Damascus or somewhere in Afghanistan or some war-torn place uh, around Somalia. You would not believe that that is in Cross River State. You will not believe that our governor is a professor, our deputy governor is a professor and former vice chancellor. It is a sad, 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 sad thing to, for anybody to think about. So it is either they, they, they don't want to do it or they are just being wicked, or they don't know, or all they uh, yearned for was power, which they now have, and so they are having fun. And they've been having this fun for, uh, for seven years plus. It's going to be eight years of fun seeking or fun having in the government, government house in Cross River State. So education is not something that they have paid attention to uh, except lip service. So we will pay strong attention. Like I said, we'll restructure the civil service. We will reconcile a lot of things in Cross River State. We will restore a lot of things in Cross River State. Education is one of those things that we will restructure. You put, thank God, that's our state library. 
And if you go back and look at that state library now, it's probably worse than what you're looking at now. Some of these walls are, are dropping already. And somebody that tells you, how would people from Cameroon or from anywhere come to a state like this to say they want to come and learn? Now, when I was growing up, the, our state library used to be somewhere near the market. And I had a library card and used to go there to borrow books and read. But look at the picture that we are looking at now, that is on the screen now, for people to see and tell themselves that this is the state library in Calabar, the capital of Cross River State. A land that had Hope Hotel Training Institution was founded in 1895. And that education has been in Cross River State for a very, very, very long time, over 200 years of Western education. And that's our state library that we're looking at. So it's a sad, sad story. But let me say, let's not dwell on the sadness of it, because, because if it was well, I would not be offering myself to serve. Let me say that we will focus on education. We'll restore the things that we need to restore. The ones we need to restructure, we'll restructure. The ones we need to reconcile, we'll reconcile them to make sure that it sits well uh, in, 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 in what, is, what it is in modern education. It, maybe it is something of uh, the, Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian thing, the things that have happened to us in this country as, as a whole. I was reading some material where the, uh, the king of Saudi Arabia and his family members used to come to Ibadan to come and take treatment because the UCH in Ibadan used to be one of the best in the world. But today you now ask yourself when they refer you to the UCH or they refer you any of your family members to Luth, you begin to you begin to shiver because you probably th just imagine that maybe from there you'll be going to the mortuary you don't want to imagine that you are going there for help it's the same thing that, that has permeated the entire system in nigeria and uh, but this time is what we seek for men that have the fear of god men that have the interest of the people at heart men that can restore that have capacity to speak truth to power and get things done that can galvanize society that can speak to young people so that young people can join hands because me and some members of my my age group and generation we are on our way out and we we should stop electing people who have missed childhoods somebody gets into government and remembers that he didn't wear uh boga as a young man and decides to wear face caps and turns it the other way and wears a t-shirt and flies his shirt and begin to go about biking, you just see in the man that this man is uh, psychologically traumatized. And these are the kind of people we put in government. Or somebody becomes a minister and um, remembers that he probably would have wanted to join any of the paramilitary services or military service and gets a red beret and begin to dress like a man of war or a boy scout. I mean, when you see people who have missed childhoods, the psychology and trauma uh, leads them into office. And they want to have fun that they didn't have as children. Those are the kind of people that we have. People that will tell, oh, they have structure because they have this big man, that, bad, that, that big man that wants to railroad them into office. And they get railroaded into office and the rest of us suffer. So I seize this opportunity to speak to not just the electorate in Cross River, but across Nigeria. We can really change these things. We can really vote for candidates that can bring about this change, positive change, that can make Nigeria, that can make our local community, especially in Cross River State, that can turn life around. I mean, how do you, how do you think that somebody, a community as small as Bakasi gets 500 million naira every month, and you go there, there's no borehole, there's no water to drink. How much does it cost to sink one? How does it? But they get money. Now, what do they do with this money? And they say they are creating industry. I mean, you, you, you go into office and destroy everything you, you, you met. And after that, you now begin to build uh, warehouses and, and, and places and say so you are building industries. For who? The educational system you're destroying. And you say, who are those that are going to fill these industries? So things are not just working because the persons that we elect into office, that we railroad into office, don't have capacity, they don't have depth. They don't, they don't have the interest of the people. They don't have any passion towards uplifting the people. They don't understand what humanity is. Okay. They do not have the fear of God. Okay. And um, that's what we have. Yeah. Cross River, um, no matter how we look at it, you have talked about the potential that Cross River has, especially in terms of tourism, because everything we're talking about is connected to this tourism. Even the education we're talking about, uh, Bayo uh, raised the point that people used to come from other uh, Central African countries to study in Cross River State. But a key factor that will give you uh, that leverage, that will give you uh, the tourists that should come into your state, 
is security. And now we are hearing that the security situation in Cross River State is really not good, as good as it used to be at least. But any time the governors come to talk about security, they tell us that uh, security is not within their power. It is the federal government that has the police, the army, and everything, and it's a problem for them to secure the state, even though they are the chief security officers. Uh, we're wondering if you, will, if you get to that position, you are going to give the same excuse, or what will you do differently that will bring security to cross Thank you state? very much. You see, it's just that such answers are very diversionary. I'm not the chief security officer. The security is not in my, is not within my purview. It is in the jurisdiction. It's the federal government. But I get the security vote. What do I do with it? When governors collect security vote and put it at the back pocket and begin to spend it as if it's their own allowance, that's where you have the problem. Let me say that Cross River State is a, what I will do about security. All of the security agencies in Cross River State, we will work with them. The young people, the young boys and girls that will be patrolling the security areas will be paid overnight allowances and pocket money. We will liaise with the government of Cameroon because they are our brothers and friends. Because understand that the people from Usagede, who are on the other side of Cameroon, the people from Boya, who are on the other side of Cameroon, a lot of them have relations in, in us, even before the city of Bakasi. We have people who have their relations and brothers in Cameroon. We'll work with them. We'll work with the Cameroonian government. And the gendarmes will cooperate with them and ensure that mar marine th thievery, piracy, and all of that is curtailed. We'll work with the governments of Akwaibom State to make sure that the, the distance between Oron, Ibaka, and all of those places in Akwaibom State and Crossbar State, those places are, pol are policed. The Nigerian Navy has capacity to, is one of the strongest in Africa. The Nigerian Navy has all the capacity, and the headquarters of the Eastern Naval Command has always been in, in Cross River State. NNS Sadans has always been in Cross River State. Now, why would, they, why would we not work with the, 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 the Navy to ensure that our maritime sectors, our maritime uh, security is protected? There's also the Marine Police. Then we will also make sure that the boys and girls of Bakasi and all of those river areas are educated and are employed. Now, when, for instance, money is collected to provide jobs and those jobs are not provided schools are not built what would you expect young people to do who are in their prime definitely you have already you, are, you as a government you are laying the foundation you are, you are laying the foundation for criminality and much of these criminalities and kidnapping and all happen in those areas but be, and it is simply because there are no jobs simply because there are no there's no development let me say that as governor of cross river state we will create 22 developmental areas, development council areas, where administration or local government administration will be taken to the limit where there will be expansion, there will be development across the state. The politics of Cross River State is quite pathetic. Let me say this. Cross no, but, but before you say that, when you're talking about creating development councils, yes. the local government system right now doesn't seem to work. What are you going to do? For it's the not, local government system first before you create... The, it's not working because the state governors are in charge. They are not letting it work. Yes? Because whatever funds that come to the local government, that go, go, the state government takes it and administers it the way it wants. It does not allow it to work. And that's why it's not working. So we'll do things differently and allow larger autonomy for local government so that local government can create jobs and employ people and give contracts to local contractors so that they will get the benefit of what funds that come to the, local, the third tier of government. So there will be development and money will be available at that tier of government. That is one. Importantly, we'll let me give this narrative of bad politics that we play in Nigeria. Two local governments, Odupani and Akangpa, is bigger than the whole of Akwaibom State. Akwaibom State has 31 local government areas. Cross River State has 18. Cross River State is larger than Kanu. Kanu State has 44 local government areas. Kanu, uh, Cross River State has 18. Play the look at the mathematics. Cross River State gets, a, let's say, 100 million naira per, per, per month for development to local governments. Cross River State gets, gets 1.8. Kanu State gets 4.4. Akwaibom State with two local governments get 33.1 billion, Cross River State gets 1.8. So the politics ab initio is bad. There is need for the federal government and the National Assembly to look at the local government structure of Nigeria and address it. The same thing happens here in Lagos. Lagos has 20 local government according to the federal government. I mean, good credit to Bola Tinubu for creating 
37 development council areas and that gave rise to instant development of Lagos which I think this is one of the things that one and I will take back to Cross that I've decided to implement in Cross Valley to bring about instant development across the area. A council development area council does not mean local government area. It's a development council, it's a development center where you will create room and create opportunities for people to get jobs and for things to work. So there are a whole lot of these things that can be working. Let me also quickly have talking about the restiveness in Bakasi and every day when we say there are no jobs. At the EPZ in, in, in Calabar, we have about 37 industries that have the capacity to employ at least 2,000 persons. That EPZ is not working up to 20% capacity because the power turbines, three of them, are not working. As a government, we will join hands with the Federal Export, uh, export Free Trade Zone to ensure that the turbines there work. If the turbines are working and the industries in Cross River State in Calabar can employ 2,000 people each, that will mean 74,000 jobs instantly. So the jobs are there. The government needs to think. The government needs to be ready. The government needs to engage people that have capacity, that have vision. It's about vision. It's about capacity. It's about readiness to work. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, we've been talking all this while, Mr. Bayo. I'm, I'm sure you still have questions, but the time is really up. So we will have time to, uh, to talk about all the, the things we've heard here today. Uh, Mr. Nyong, we can only wish you good luck. <laughs> I know how the, the, the politics of Cross River State is, and I know the terrain. And it's, it's going to be uh, a Herculean task if you happen to enter there from Calabar to Obanliku is about seven hours, except you have a really good car that will take you there. So we know how it is, and we just wish you a good luck. And whatever else you conceive to do, be sure that the people will have a hand in it, they will have a say in it, and they will, you will have a channel to get their complaints and get things done according to how they would want you to do them. Thank you so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you. I also want to say that I want everyone to vote for me. We can make a change, but it's not a do or die matter. Let me borrow this from Good Luck Ability, Jonathan. My ambition is not worth anybody's, uh, the drop of anyone's blood. Is the people need to decide if they, they either choose to progress and liberate themselves, or they may choose to just be where they are. But vote for me, for there'll be a change. All right. Thank you very much for coming on the program. We'll take a short break now for the news. And when we return, we'll be talking about other issues. Stay with us.